Hello and welcome to Friday Night Fright Presents Comic Book Calvacadia 2020. Man, we're going to have some fun this month. Every episode in May, every day in May, there's going to be a brand new episode. It's going to be a mini review of a comic book movie. Yay, can't wait, hyped. So it's going to cover the gauntlet. It's going to be loads of MCU stuff. There's going to be some DC stuff probably. Uh, it might be some other stuff. There's going to be Flash recaps of Flash Season 2 every Tuesday. Um, so it's going to be four or five of those, depending on how many Tuesdays are in May. But it's going to be tight, because I've also got a week off. Yay! Anyway, this is the intro comic for Cavcadia. So you hear this every day of the week, and then you'll hear an intro for the movie and I'm covering that day. Or TV show. Ooh, scary! Anyway, I'll be back after a brief word from our sponsor. Hello! It's Ian Austin back with day... Four of comic book Calf Cage on May 4th. May the 4th be with you, as you wish. And it's a good choice of movie for today. I know I'm going in order of Marvel Cinematic Universe anyway, roughly. But today's movie is Captain America, which deals with a bit more sci fi aspects than you'd imagine. I know lots of people have different definitions on what sci fi is, but I define it as being a bunch of weird shit like in Captain America, which is pretty much implausible, but it's sort of futuristic. Um, just before I get into Captain America review proper, I should add that the comic version of Captain America never really worked for me particularly. Seeing movies was an instant experiment because this, while I say thought it was a make or break movie for Marvel Cinematic Universe being able to do weird shit, this was a make or break movie because if you, you could pull Captain America off, the sky's the limit. He's a very difficult character to pull off because in comic books he's very, very earnest and very... You know, matter of fact, and very old fashioned, and slightly sexist or racist, depending on the um, um, version you read, especially the ultimate Marvel Comics version. But in general, it's very difficult path because on page sometimes it seems stupid, and a bit like Thor with his Shakespearean language and his stupid manner of speaking. Sometimes Captain America seems more comic booky than you'd imagine a character should be. And the movies had a lot of. Dif- not difficulty, but they had a thing line to tread. It's that Superman line of, you know, it's very difficult to write for a character who's just generally good and nice. And Marvel definitely had that tightrope to walk on. But I think single movies, it's fair to say, they nailed it with Chris Evans. But that's neither here nor there. Because they did nail it with Chris Evans. But how about the first movie, Captain America, first Avenger? Was that any good? Does it hold up nowadays? That's what I'm about to find out. So I'll be back in a brief second after a brief word from our sponsor. So, how's Captain America hold up? I would say really, 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 really well, actually. It's kind of strange because I haven't seen this particular one in a while because um, several people I know I'm safe have raised the complaint and it's a bad complaint that movie peaks halfway through where he leads all of those soldiers back to camp, and it's a fantastic moment. It's really, really awesome. And then moving continues 45 more minutes. And while that is a valid critique, I mean, I still think it is, you know, for the context of what they're doing for Marvel Cinematic Universe, you needed that final 45 minutes or so, where, you know, he's with Peggy, sacrifices himself, and then goes to the, um, winds up in modern day, uh, are freezing for so many years. We needed that for the Marvel Cinematic Universe, and I think that's something Kevin Feige is particularly good at, um, seeing the long-term picture. A lot of people see short-term, and, you know, especially in case of DC Cinematic Universe, very, very short-term, and they come pissed up, whereas Kevin Feige was like, well, we'll put this in, we'll put this in. Not sure exactly how it's going to pay off, but we'll, we'll get there at some point. No. Very flexible way of thinking. But anyway, back to Captain America. What I think I like most about this movie is it's earnest. It's genuinely earnest. And while you can make the comment that Marvel's attempt to be a, to um, make movies that feel pseudo auteur driven, in this case, Joe Johnson, director of Rock Tear and a bunch of Steven Spielberg movies like Jurassic Part 3. But I mean, it does feel like a Joe Johnson mo- movie. Now, whether that's good or bad, depend on your personal take on Joe Johnson. Um, I don't mind him, and I think he's a good fit for this material. But 
it seems like, especially in retrospect, I keep saying in retrospect a lot, but in my last few reviews for Iron Man, Iron Man 2 and 4, I point out that like they feel somewhat construct cookie car but at the same time they were giving opportunities to directors john favreau made his name writing swingers directing made and sephira so it's an interesting choice thing iron man moving iron man does filming which is like john favreau iron man feels like a john favreau movie mixed with superheroes iron man 2 feels like a sort of half john favreau half singmax super movie and four feels half and half a Kenneth Branagh movie. This feels very much like a Joe Johnson movie. If you've seen Rocketeer, this isn't as good as a Rocketeer, obviously, but it, it does feel very much in that sort of wheelhouse. And they keep all the cool little bits, all Marvel connections and all stuff like that. But at the same time, it manages to pull off the impossible, making Captain America a fully realised character rather than a piece of propaganda. You can ignore my um, little about section for this episode where I talk about propaganda being beautiful. That's just me being smart ass. But Captain America is definitely an example of a movie which rises and falls on its main character and main actor. In this case, Chris Evans' Captain America. And I don't think it's out of line to say the casting of Chris Evans at the time was a bit like, wait, what? Because he made his name playing characters like Human Torch, Johnny Storm, and the guy from Scott Pilgrim vs. The Weird in Nine Love Team movie. And he's a particularly good comedic actor, but casting him something like this as Captain America is very much a matter of fact character, just a good man who changes the world around him rather than changes himself, although he does have character development during this movie. But he makes the way the better place. It's that Superman approach, you know. A nice, just a good man. And managing to pull that off and sound earnest without sounding preachy is very, very difficult. But Chris Evans nails it completely and utterly. And he's the reason the movie succeeds. And indeed, to be honest, a large part of why Marvel Cinematic Universe succeeds. Because Thor and Iron Man are sort of bravado, you know, cocky, you know, really big characters big issues like when four projects emotionally it's real 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 hollywood style projection that's not a knock on chris hemsworth it's just four and iron man are big big emotional characters emotional highs emotional lows captain america is more subtle he's he's someone who doesn't really let his emotions show too much they are there but it's very much a a degree of you know Captain America's having breakdown. It's got to be portrayed in a really subtle way. And that's something that brings to the table. It's that style of acting which contrasts the Rob Down Jr. for style of acting and creates the balance of it. And I think Chris Evans is wonderful in this movie. I genuinely think he's not given enough credit as an actor as he should be. But he's aptly supporting this movie by actors like Stanley Cooch. He has a professor at skiing. Hayley Atwell's Peggy Carter. I mean, Stan Gucci's particularly brilliant. Tom Lee Jones is um, General something, I can't remember. General Phillips or Phillips or whatever. Dominic Cooper's House Stark, which is also very good. And Sebastian Stan's Buck Barnes. And mean, you've all got... Oh, shit, what's his name? I can't remember his name. The dude from... Toby Young is um, Zola. And Hugo Weaving for his skull. So it's a really good cast in this movie. Um, even though some of them don't get that much to do. But it's probably first time Marvel movie. I mean, 4 had some of it, but this is like... If you got have movie Stanley Tucci frigging Tom Lee Jones in it, that'd be a pretty pretty big middle mid-road movie. You know, you'd be like, wow, that sounds interesting, seeing those two characters, characters play off each other. And getting them from Marvel movies is a particularly good thing. And then you've got Hugo Weaving too. I know he's laid under prosthetics and apparently never wants to come back to the role, though I think that's more him realising Red Skull is a one and done character for an actor because there's not much there in the surface. You can't redeem him because he's a scumbag of highest order. So yeah, it's a, and the action's good. I, I, I like the action. It's very. Very watchable, and some of the quips are good. And just for the fact that they managed to layer a sense of fun into it. Obviously, the Second World War wasn't all laughs and games, but they remembered that this is meant to be a movie for mainstream audiences, so you've got to have a few jokes in there, like a kid who's taking off seats and thrown in water, but assures Captain America you can swim. Some of the songs are good. I love the way they incorporate Captain America's like bat story in there in terms of the history of character. You've got 
the allusions to the rubbish cereals, of which I own one, and say rubbish in an endearing way, cereals, um, you got the co- famous comic book cover of him punching Hitler and they managed to allude to, without him actually punching Hitler, so that'd be silly, although I still would have laughed. You got the ways they incorporate in costume, and generally, you get a sense there's a lot of love for the character here. And that's something which contrasts sharply with DC's approach with things like Superman, where you don't get the impression anyone at Warner Brothers themes prior to a few years ago had any idea how to write Superman. And they're showing up by Marvel's Captain America. And it's not like Captain America and Superman are the same character. There are vast dis- differences between them. But at the same time, it goes back to what I was saying of... The whole point of these characters, both of them, are good men who do the right thing because it's the right thing to do. You know, you don't need to overcomplicate it. And I think especially in the late, late Superman movies, it won't make him a tragic Christ-like figure. And it's like, no, he's not. He's, he's, he's like, he's a wish for fear, man. You know, he's a character who exists to make us feel better. And while I wasn't quite as adamant as people like Mark Wade, who basically had pretty much a nervous breakdown at how Superman acts in Man of Steel and how our character is, because I have my own take on that. I do agree with the idea of Superman to be someone kids look up to, and that's brilliance of Chris Evans and Marvel's way that they handle Captain America. He literally is someone kids can look up to. He tries to do the right thing while being painfully aware that sometimes the right thing does go against the laws and governments and things like that, because... That's how that's how life works, you know. Right, the idea of Captain America as a government puppet doesn't sit well with anyone anymore. And I think this movie particularly does a good job portraying him as someone who does what's right, not necessarily what's legal, if that makes any sense. So yeah, I really enjoyed this one. Four out of five, definitely. Best Marvel movie to date. And it really does set up nicely for The Avengers, which is my next movie coming up tomorrow on May 5th. So... There you go. Uh, well, thanks for listening again. If anyone's listening to this, I know it's quite a commitment listening to it daily. Again, new bonus episode the entire month of May. But I'm very thankful to anyone who listens to this podcast. I sincerely am. Oh, wait, no, Avengers isn't tomorrow. The Tomorrow is The Flash. Um, uh, episode one of season two of Flash. And then Avengers is on Wednesday. My bad. Anyway, until next time, remember... Life is beautiful.